we'll do the scale around here. You're here for the brake inspection, right? I am, yes. All right. Oh, Jeff, by the way. Trent. Trent, nice to meet you. Nice sir. to meet you. Okay. Uh, you leaving it with us for a little bit? I am, yeah. Okay. Uh, keys? Oh, right. Uh, yeah. well, we'll take a look and see what we can come up with for you, bud. All right. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, sir. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. Bye, Van. See you in a couple days. Hey everyone, my name is Trent and I'm currently living and traveling out of my van all over Alaska. And I just dropped my van off at the mechanic as you guys just saw because it needs some brake work done and my back doors are jammed for whatever reason. And now my van will be in the shop for the next couple of days, probably. And because I'm currently living out of my van, this specific situation makes things really complicated for me because now I'm without both a vehicle and a home. And as you can tell, I am currently walking, uh, trying to figure out what my next move is. I'm currently in this small town here in Alaska, and because it's a small town in Alaska, there's no Uber, as far as I know, and finding places to stay is few and far between. And since I'm currently traveling, I don't really know anyone in this town except for one other person. And unfortunately they are out of town. So getting someone to come and pick me up in this situation is kind of out of the question. But thankfully last minute, I was able to organize a place for me and my dog Millie to stay at for the next couple of days. And I'll show you guys that whenever we can figure out a way to get there, which I guess I'm just gonna call around, see if there's a taxi service that I could use here. I don't even know if that's a thing in this town. And if that doesn't work, I guess we're hitchhiking. <laughs> okay, I'm in luck. Looks like there is some sort of taxi service here in town called Alaska Cab. Good morning, Alaska Cab. Hey there, uh, I need a taxi. All right, where do you need to be picked up at? I am at the corner of Trent Circle. You know, I can, just to make it easier, can I get picked up at Laughing Salmon? All right, I have got you down. Just hang tight. We'll get to you as quickly as we can. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, bye. Mm -hmm, bye, bye Okay, that was a lot easier than I was expecting. Even though there's no Uber service here, there definitely is a taxi service. So they're going to pick me up in just a few minutes, and then we'll be headed off to our home for the next few days. By the way, this road that I'm on is called Trent Circle. That's pretty cool. That's a cool name for a road. That might be one of the coolest road names I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> well, while we wait for this taxi to show up, there's this soda shop here. Might as well get me a little fun drink to start off the day. Hi. Hi. Question, is there like a popular drink that everyone gets here? Uh, what soda do you like? I'm a Dr. Pepper kind of guy, but Pepsi's good too. The Vader. Raspberry puree, coconut and cream. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Sweet. Appreciate it. Have a good day. You too. All right, let's give this a shot. Dr. Pepper, raspberry puree, chocolate and cream. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. That might be the best beverage I've ever had slither down my throat. It's really sweet, but it's really delicious. Well, while we wait for this taxi, let's chat for a second. I don't know about you guys, but for the past year, I have been getting bombarded with a bunch of spam calls and texts nonstop. So I went on the internet and did some research and found out that there are these data brokers out there that collect all of your personal data that you have online, like your name, your phone number, your address, your email addresses, and they put it all on this list and they sell it to different companies to target you for marketing, which could then lead to potential identity theft and overall just a serious violation of your personal privacy. However, I also found out that you have the legal 
right to reach out to these companies and demand that they take your personal information off of these lists. But that would take literally hundreds of hours to do because there's so many of these companies out there. But that's of course where today's video sponsor comes in, Incogni. Incogni is a service that you can sign up for right now that will reach out on your behalf to all of these companies and demand that they take all of your personal information off of these lists, therefore preserving your personal privacy. All you have to do is sign up, plug in all of your information that you want off of these lists. Incogni will then search the internet for all of that information and then reach out to those companies on your behalf and demand that they take all of that information down. And if you sign up for the annual plan like I do, Incogni will continue to search the web for all that information and continue to reach out on your behalf to keep that information private. So do yourself a favor and click the link in the description of this video and take your privacy back by signing up with Incogni and use my code TRENTTHETRAVELER at checkout to get 60% off of your annual plan. Thank you Incogni for sponsoring this video. I appreciate you, but uh, we got a taxi to catch. Hello. Oh, hi. That's a cute puppy. Well, thank you. <laughs> How are you doing? Do some pretty good, pretty good. Great. Started off running, so that's good. Yeah. Just right here? Yeah, this is fine. Awesome, thank you so okay, much. perfect, you have a good one. You too. Hello. Bye. Bye. Well, we officially made it back. Home sweet home. <laughs> and if you guys have been watching my videos for a couple weeks now, this place might look a little familiar to you based off that plane over there. This is in fact my buddy John's property and he has been so nice and he is letting me stay in this beautiful little A-frame cabin that he built for the next couple of days while I get my van worked on. And after I made the appointment to put the van in the shop, I went ahead and moved everything I own out of the van and into this A-frame cabin because I don't really know when I'll get my van back. They said a couple days, but who knows? It could be a week, it could be two weeks. So I got everything, my clothes, food, cookware, everything. And it's all in that cabin right there, including my beautiful pup Millie who is just dying to see me again. <laughs> Millie! <laughs> hey girl! Long time no see! Alright, let me show you guys the living quarters for the next couple of days. Well, home sweet home! <laughs> As I said, I've already moved all of my stuff in here and Millie and I have already slept one night in this cabin and it actually has been really great despite it being an unfinished cabin and there's not much to it. As you can tell, I've got my gaming set up here on this little desk. The kitchen setup is pretty much non-existent. All I have is this mini fridge, a microwave, and an induction cooktop. And the bed setup is just a twin bed, which is totally cool with me. I'm able to sleep comfortably just about anywhere. But if I wanted to, I could sleep up in the loft on this bed up here, but that wouldn't be very fair to Millie because she wouldn't be able to get up there and she likes to sleep with me. But even though there's not much to this cabin, it's kind of just a glorified shed that has some insulation, has some electricity hooked up to it. There's no running water. There's no integrated heating system or anything like that. This is all that I need, guys. This is what van life has taught me to be comfortable with. So really, these next few days, aren't gonna be all that different from what I'm used to. Now, by this point, you're probably wondering, is there a shower, is there a bathroom? Where can I do laundry? And don't worry, even though this cabin is not finished, there is an option for me to do all of that. And it's in this little building right here, which is adjacent to all of the nicer finished cabins over here that John rents out. But in here, we've got a place to do some laundry. And then back behind here, we got a nice shower, a toilet, and a sink to wash dishes in if we need to, which is really all I need to be comfortable. So I think these next couple of days are gonna be just fine. I'd come out here on this beautiful day, make some breakfast, 
And what's on the menu? Something simple. I'm not super hungry, but I need to eat. I haven't eaten yet, so I'm just gonna make some egg sandwiches. That's it. Whew, it's hot out here. Well, I forgot to pack some mayonnaise when I was moving into this cabin. Normally I would lather this bread up with some mayonnaise, but uh, I guess we're eating these eggs dry. This is something that I would eat as a kid all the time, because it was easy to make and it was filling. Top it with some Valentinas. Boom. Well, I guess this is my life now. I don't really know what to do because I don't have a vehicle. I can't go anywhere. But conveniently enough, the new expansion for World of Warcraft just came out, The War Within. So I'll probably be sitting around playing that a lot, catching up on some work, some emails, and just living the cabin life. You're waiting on me, Millie? Good girl. <laughs> All right, brunch has been served and cleaned up. My belly's full, so I think for the rest of the day, I'm gonna hang out in the cabin, because uh, what else is there to do? At some point today, I do have to do some work, but I think the majority of the day, I'm actually gonna be doing a lot of gaming. The new expansion for World of Warcraft just came out, The War Within, and I'm sucked back in, boys and girls. I've been playing with some friends of mine, and it's just been so much fun. And honestly, lately, with traveling through Alaska, I haven't had a lot of time or willpower to just sit around and game all day because I'm in this beautiful state, and I just wanna see it all. I wanna adventure, I wanna be outside and experience it all. So the last thing I wanna do is be cooped up inside playing video games. But I think this experience of having my van in the shop and being forced to be in one spot for a couple of days is a good opportunity to take advantage of that and play one of my favorite games that I've played all of my life. And I think I've sort of needed this lately. I've needed an opportunity to just sit and settle down for a bit and just relax because I've been go, go, going nonstop since I got here to Alaska. So I think this whole event is a blessing in disguise, which I'm thankful for. Well guys, I have been playing World of Warcraft all day long. <laughs> One, because I'm really enjoying this new expansion, and two, I don't really know what else to do. <laughs> and to be honest, I'm okay with it, because as I said earlier, ever since I got here to Alaska, I have just been going non-stop. Going to a new place every day, doing a cool new hike, seeing cool new things all the time. 
and it's been an incredible experience. But throughout these two or three months now that I've been here in Alaska traveling around in my van, I really haven't made time for myself to just do nothing. And because I've been doing a whole bunch of nothing today, I didn't pick up the camera at all or film anything because I did nothing to capture. And while that may have made this video so far not very entertaining, it's been really good for me. <laughs> and it's just kind of the reality of the situation that I'm experiencing right now. And you know, I didn't really have a plan for this video. I just knew that I wanted to capture this and share this moment with you guys because I think this is an important side of van life that people need to see. Not every day of this lifestyle is going out, doing a crazy adventure, seeing beautiful things all the time. Sometimes things like this happen where you, uh, your van needs to go in the shop and you gotta figure out how to manage that. Not every day of this lifestyle consists of going out, doing some crazy adventure. Sometimes being a nomad is just sitting around. And that's exactly what I did today. And I think my body, my mind, my heart, and my soul kind of needed that. And this situation has kind of forced me to do that, which I've been avoiding a lot. So I am just gonna embrace this. It feels weird, like sitting and doing nothing, like not wondering where I'm gonna go next. Like usually I have this thought in my mind, like, okay, in the morning I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna make my coffee and then I'm gonna drive two hours over here and then I'm gonna do this hike and then after that I'm gonna go into town and get some lunch. And this is like the first time in a long time where I haven't had that mindset. And it's kind of an interesting feeling. And to be honest, I think this is a good trial run for the next phase of my life which I don't think I'm ready to talk about yet, but you guys will hear about it here soon in a future video, so stay tuned. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's been a couple of days since I've last checked in with you guys. After I picked up my van and got back to the cabin, I basically just hung out for a little bit, woke up the next morning, packed everything up, and then hit the road. And I didn't film much of that because there really wasn't much to film. I was feeling pretty stagnant being cooped up in that cabin, not having my van for a couple of days. So as soon as I got the van back, I was eager to get back on the road. And it was also raining for like two weeks straight, and now we finally have a nice, beautiful, sunny day here in Alaska. So Millie and I are making the best out of the situation and going for a nice little stroll through this beautiful forest. And I think this leads to a lake of some sort, but I'm really not sure. But to be honest, I'm not really concerned about the end destination. It's more so about the journey today. I'm just glad to be out enjoying this beautiful day today. Whoa, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but this tree is massive. Look at this. <laughs> this is a big guy right here. Whoa, look at this mushroom. That sucker is huge. I don't know anything about mushrooms, but I see those guys all over the place in these little rainforest areas. Speaking of which, we are by the coast now, kind of near Seward, Alaska, and this area of Alaska is very rainforesty, very wet all year round, but it's one of the prettier parts of Alaska that I've explored so far, that's for sure. I mean, look at all this moss on these trees here. Look at all these yellow leaves on the ground. They're everywhere and it's beautiful. It is definitely 
fall here. And even though you guys can't tell through the screen, it's actually pretty chilly today. I think the high today is about 48 degrees Fahrenheit and we are right at the beginning of September. So if that tells you anything, winter is afoot. That's for sure. Wow, this is stunning. It is such a beautiful day. Oh, how I've missed that sun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and what's crazy about this beautiful view is that this trail isn't anything extravagant. Like this is a trail that's in the back of a neighborhood right outside of the town of Seward. And look at this, look at these views. That's what I love about Alaska, man. Everywhere you go, no matter what trail you pick, no matter which way you go, you're gonna find something beautiful. This place has an abundance of beauty. Oh wow, check this out. There are tons of what looks like, I guess these are salmon carcasses. They're all over this shore right here. Wow, they're all over the place. This is crazy. There's some right there too. And you know what? I wanna say that all of these carcasses here are left by some fishermen fishing in this lake here, but honestly, because there are so many scattered on the shoreline, I actually believe it's because of the bears. Bears often catch their own salmon in these like little rivers and lakes here, and they'll take some chunks out of them and then leave the carcass right on the shore, obviously, because they're bears, they don't have trash cans at home, you know. And given the sheer amount of bones that are scattered around here, I'm gonna say that my theory is correct, especially with it being this time of the year. That's a, that's a neat little find, uh, but also kind of scary because that means that bear are pretty active in this area, so. I'm gonna keep a watch out for them. Good girl, good job, come on, good job. Well, that was nice, but I think I'm gonna run into town and grab a few things, and then I'm gonna try to find a nice place to camp for the night. Fantastic, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Oh. oh, pardon me. Do you still have the fish and chips? Yes. Cool, can I get that? Yes, sir. Well, I decided to come into town and go to one of my favorite places to eat here in Seward, which is Miller's Landing, which is actually right outside of the town of Seward at Lowell Point. You have to drive maybe like two miles down the road south of the city limits, but this place has some incredible, incredible views. Definitely deserves uh, an award of some sort, but also they have the best fish and chips here because their fish is actually really fresh. Mm.
All right, home sweet home. Wow, this is crazy. It's been a couple weeks since I've been here, but I've parked at this spot several times throughout my stay here in Alaska. This place has kind of become like my second home almost. It's just this riverbed right outside of the town of Seward. And usually this place is filled with other vans and RVs and campers. However, there's only just a few here now. And I think that's just because the season is changing. And as we get closer and closer to winter here, the tourists start to leave Alaska and start heading down south, which is why this place is now a bit of a ghost town, which is crazy. But I've got me a bundle of wood and some starter for tonight's shenanigans. Right in this little area. Wow, all these leaves, that's crazy. Uh, there's a nice little fire pit here, which will be great because it's in the woods and out of this wind that we're experiencing right now. And as you can tell, it's cloudy again. The beautiful sunny days never last here. That's why you gotta embrace them when they finally come around. So as you guys know, my back doors are jammed. So anytime I need to get into the garage of my van, which is the space up under my bed where I store all my tools, my propane, my water, everything. Anytime I need to get back there, I have to pull up my mattress and reach back down under there because I can't open my back doors, which is exactly why my bedding is the way that it is right now is because I keep needing to go back there. And every time I go back there, my bed just gets messed up. So it's always looking like this now at this point until I get my back doors fixed, which is gonna be a huge headache, but I need to get back there and grab my hammock. So uh, this is how I do it. <laughs> Got it. Mission successful. All right, let's get this fire started. Ah, man, all this wood is just soaking wet from all this rain we've been getting. But that's to be expected, and I came prepared. I bought this bundle of logs in town today to keep the fire going, but I also got this, which is fat wood to basically start the fire. And this is honestly, if you're trying to start a fire in wet conditions or any conditions, fatwood is the way to go. This stuff lights up like crazy. And what's even cooler is that this is naturally occurring. This is not an ad. This is just something that I use all the time. Fatwood is naturally occurring in wood. Basically, if you see like an old stump or something or old trees in general, oftentimes you'll find this like really dark part of the wood where like all the resin has like condensed. And that's what this is, except it's chopped up. And if you smell it, oh, it smells so good. And uh, yeah, it lights right up. So I'm gonna light a few of these. I'm gonna try to throw a few, few of these sticks on there to keep it going, but um, I think we might actually just have to burn up this whole box. And I'm going to gently place this on top. Boom. Now we got a fire. Also, my friends over at ROG sent me this brand new toy, which I'm super stoked about. This here is the ROG Ally X. You guys know me, love to do some gaming, and uh, gaming on the go is easier than ever now with the new Ally X model. 
because this battery power on this thing is so much better than the original, which I have been gaming on for quite some time. This one's great and I love it, but honestly, the Ally X battery life is just so much better. And tonight I'm going to be playing some WoW on it by the fire, cozying up. It's gonna be great. And uh, if you guys wanna learn more about the Ally X, I am sponsored by ROG, by the way, um, which I'm super thankful for because they always send me fun new toys like this to play with. But uh, if you wanna learn more about the Ally X, get one for yourself. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. I have been playing the new expansion, The World War Within, but uh, I haven't set up my add-on, my gamepad controller add-on uh, to the new expansion yet, so I'm just gonna play a little bit of Classic WoW, continue leveling my new rogue on Season of Discovery. Honestly, I haven't played this guy in a hot minute. Millie wants to get up. Okay, hold on, hold on, wait. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, jump! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ah! no, no kisses in the mouth, please. Oh, she got me good, guys. She got me good. <laughs> I love you, girl, but no kisses in the mouth. Isn't that great, though? Millie knows how to count to three. Watch. One, two, three. <laughs> kind of a dumb trick, I know, but hey, it's cute. And she loves hanging on the hammock with me. And by hanging on the hammock with me, I mean just like kissing me nonstop. <laughs> Millie. <laughs> So far, fall is exceeding my expectations. It is so beautiful, and we're not even at the peak season of fall here yet. We probably have about a week or so more before these colors become really vibrant, but as soon as they do, these leaves fall right off. <laughs> and then, it's winter. <laughs> but to be honest, I feel like these past couple of weeks, I really haven't been able to fully embrace Alaska like I have been wanting to. I have been working on so much behind the scenes that you guys won't know about until a little later, so stick around. But that has been taking up a lot of my mental space and my time. So if this video feels a little weird, if it feels a little off, it's because I'm juggling a lot right now and I'm trying to work my way through it and get everything worked out without fully spilling the beans just yet. But if you guys just stay patient with me, you will all know soon enough what I've been cooking in the kitchen lately. And I'll just be honest, it's smelling pretty good. Isn't it, Millie? <laughs> but every now and then we have a day like this where the sun comes out and the stress of trying to make sure everything falls into place just dies down for a little bit and we get to enjoy the beautiful Alaskan nature together. But I think for the rest of the evening, I'm gonna hang out, enjoy what's left of this fire, relax a little bit, and then head off to bed. Thank you. 